and welcome to our parent info night for our sophomores. Um, we will be going over a lot of really good information today about um, sophomore year and why it's important and how you can support your child to stay on the right track. So let's jump right into that. So, um, you know, my name is Rebecca Alcaraz. I'm the ninth and 10th grade counselor. And we will be going over some common problems today, A through G, what that is and why it's important. We'll be going over sophomore year, PSAT testing, um, college and career prep. And um, I hope to answer all your questions, but if not, you can always call me or send me an email and I will um, you know, look for the correct answer for you in that way. So a little bit about me. I, re I moved from New York City, but I grew up in Truckee, California. Um, I have two masters. I have one in school counseling and one in psychological counseling from Teachers College. This is my fifth year in school counseling, counseling so that's super exciting. And I love to travel and hope to start traveling soon. Um, I also enjoy participating in Spartan races and hope to complete the race in Tahoe one year. So if you need to get a hold of me, appointments are super helpful. They do help streamline the process. Um, you can book an appointment via our website online through the North Tahoe High School website. Um, we also have some accounts on social media, so Facebook and Twitter. And um, the counseling website that we have through the school is updated regularly with a lot of information about any events that we might be having or what we're doing right now to support our students. So if you ever have any questions about anything, um, please make sure to head to that website and see if um, there's some information there that could be helpful. And just get familiar with that website because it really is a great website and it has a lot of really good information about our department. And of course, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, you know, I definitely want to help as much as I can. And this is my second year at the high school level. So I'll be learning as well. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. So here on the slide, you'll see that this is the North Tahoe High School website. So if you see the programs tab up here on top, you hover over it, you'll see the school counseling department site. So if you click on that, um, it'll take you to our school counseling website and there you can make an appointment there's a button that will allow you to do that or um you know just browse because we have a lot of really great links to um, important information if you do click on book an appointment um, it will ask you to pick um, a specific amount of time so just make sure that you're picking the correct amount of time whether it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes that way we um, are able to answer all your questions thoroughly so um, Hillary has a video but um, it's not working so I won't be playing it now but it is on our YouTube channel if you're interested in watching it it's a really quick video um, she's our wellness center liaison and she focuses on working with our students specifically in the social emotional realm she is a great resource for everyone so the wellness center is there for all students if they need a break from class or if they need to vent or if they have something on their mind that they need to talk about um, they can go to the wellness center of course, you have my office as well, but she is just another great resource in our building. So counselor student parent relationship. So parents, parent norms. It will definitely help you parents if you encourage and support your student, but do not take their responsibility. So begin talking about life after high school, talking about colleges and careers, and just make them stay on track um, just help them stay on track and making a forward progress. Um, especially as a sophomore, it's really important that they really start to practice those healthy habits and being independent and um, just having more ownership of themselves, their schedule, um, their time management, etc. Students, it will really help you if you start thinking about future college college and job choices right now. I know it can feel a bit early, but time really does fly, and it's important to at least have some type of goal in mind. 
Um, start keeping a calendar and developing an organization system. Pay attention to deadlines and create good relationships with teachers. So all those things are really important when thinking about your student, your role as a student and um, just creating those strong and positive relationships with admin and other teachers. So some common problems that, actually, let me go back one slide. So um, here is a picture of the teenage brain. So it's just a reminder that our brains are highly complex and highly plastic, amazing feats of nature. It just doesn't always feel like it, right? So you can see that the average teenage brain just has a lot going on at one time. Um, and a, a lot of these, um, what you see in the picture here are part of teenage life, right? So like, for example, love, um, there's also a rebellion center that you see here, creativity gland, um, TV storage. So it just kind of shows how there is so much happening in the teenage brain. Um, so we need to be a bit understanding about that and just give them grace. And because there's so much happening in the brain, um, we do find some common problems. So sophomores will typically believe that they are old enough to make their own decisions. And yes, while they are becoming more independent, um, you know, they still need the guide and support of adults. Um, Although they do feel like they are old enough to make their own decisions, they typically lack that knowledge. So just, again, be mindful of that. Something to think about. Um, they normally will prioritize socializing over academics. Um, they may not see how school is connected to their future, especially thinking in the long term. You know, I think it's really easy to forget that everything that you do um, starting in high school really does affect your future. So... Um, students don't always see how it's how school is really tied into their future opportunities. Relying on parents or others to take care of their responsibilities, so that is another common problem. Um, although they are still young, you know, children or our students um, still need the support of parents, but at the same time, they really are starting to be um, independent and practicing independent. So all common problems that we see. Um, and let's keep going to the next slide. So although we do see common problems and sometimes that can dig students in a hole, it's never too late to turn it around. So um, when I talk about being A through G eligible, it means that students are receiving C minus grades or higher in specific classes, um, which are categorized by, by letters. So for example, A, the category A will be history. And these classes um, are uh, what you need to have completed in order to apply to those four-year schools as a senior. So four-year schools, I mean UCs and CSUs. So if you are someone who wants to plan out your A through G or college opportunities, you can always talk to me. Um, if you ever received an F in a class, that means you did not receive those credits. So you are now deficient. So that is something that we need to talk about. Or if you received a D in any class, then that means that you are not eligible to apply to those UCs and CSUs as a senior. So then we do offer opportunities to help you remediate that grade. So please come see me if you have any questions. And education should be a priority, even though it's um, tough to remember how much education really does have an impact on your future opportunities just at least try to make it a priority um, above um, being social or, you know, whatever it may be, even with sports, you know, time management is hard, but um, making it a priority will, making school a priority makes everything a bit easier. And don't forget to work hard this year. This is the first year that colleges and universities are really taking into account your grades. So definitely continue to work hard. 
So our high school graduation requirements and the A through G, CSU, and UC requirements are closely aligned. They are not the same, but they have um, an overlap of similarities. Balance and fit are very important, and stress and overcommitting is real. So it does happen where students overcommit and take more AP classes than they really should, or um, maybe are in sports and are working and are um, doing a lot in school and are in clubs. And it's just, um, it can be really stressful if you're overcommitting. So just start to be aware about time management and what classes or what activities are, are more important and bring you happiness and balance other than stress. So this is just a graph as we can see here, you know, ninth grade um, effort and undertaking are rising. So um, by the time you are a sophomore, it technically, it is normally still going up, you know, your effort, your undertaking 11th grade is the highest time um, of all of that because your schedules are usually a bit more intense. It, um, you know, hopefully you're getting more involved at that point. So 11th grade, you're, you are giving a lot of effort. And then 12th grade, we see that dip down a little bit. So this is just uh, for you to start to realize where you are on this graph and, um, you know, be aware of what's coming. So 10th grade is going to be a tough year, but 11th grade is going to be even more tough. And then 12th grade, you see, you know, some students start to um, not put as much effort. So realizing that is going to be really important because we want you all to succeed. So now we're going into our A through G categories. So category A is history. Um, you do need two years of history, and this is what we offer. Um, we have AP classes and non-AP classes. Um, government is in here because although government and econ is for graduation and that's a senior year class, I still wanted to put it in here to remind you that you do need government and econ to graduate. English, you need four years of English, and remember, everything must be passed with a C minus or better. If you receive a F in any class, that means you're not getting those credits, and if you receive a D, that means that you are not eligible to apply to four-year schools as a senior. So C is, four, is three years of math. Four years are recommended, so that's what we offer there. So again, it's always... Um, recommended to go above and beyond the minimum just because there are going to be so many people applying to schools and we want you to have a great portfolio and want you to be competitive. So lab science, you need two years of lab science, but we do recommend three to four years. So that includes bio, chemistry, physics, all AP options, anatomy, physiology, and environmental science. You need two years of language other than English. So we offer Spanish here at that school, uh, our school. So if you started at Spanish three, just be aware that that is counting as three years of language. So um, you are able to go up to AP Spanish here. Um, but um, yes, we do have some other language opportunities. And you need one year of visual performing art pass with a C minus or better and one year of college prep elective. So that's, those are the college preps that we have on the bottom. Um, in addition to sports medicine, that is a new class this year. So what do CSUs and UCs look at? They really do focus on a holistic overview. They are going to look at your GPA, at your grades, at your essays, of your letters of recommendation, extracurricular activities, and demonstrated interests. So all of that um, is going to be really important when applying to those four-year schools. So keep that in mind as you go forward. So sophomore overview. So continue maintaining good grades. You know, that's really important. Um, again, this is the first year that CSUs and UCs will take a look um, at your GPA. Um, you know, especially 10th grade um, grades is going to be something that is more looked at this year versus last year. 
One failed class can cause a trickle effect for future courses, but it's not the end of the world. So again, you don't receive your credits when you fail a class. Um, so it could, it could cause um, a negative effect for other classes as well if you're finding that you are failing more than one class. If you have not yet get involved in something you're passionate about, so this can mean playing a sport or volunteering or uh, getting involved in something related to a future job or a major, just so that you can start to figure out what you're interested in. Um, don't spread yourself too thin. Colleges are not Colleges are looking for depth, not breadth. So um, make sure, again, that we talk, um, make sure that you are balancing everything okay. You're really trying to have good time management, that you're not spread so thin where it's stressful and it's not fun. Um, yeah, you definitely don't want to be overwhelmed. And of course, challenge yourself in appropriate honors or AP classes. So, and everyone's gonna be different, right? So one um, student may have three AP classes, another student may have one or zero. So don't compare yourself, but make sure to challenge yourself um, and challenge yourself with the appropriate amount of AP courses. So sophomores should be researching colleges and careers to start to get their mind ready for life after high school. They should go to college and career fairs if they are available. If you travel, try to stop at college campuses along the way. That could be something fun you can do with your family. Or start a planner or a binder for college and career information and update that regularly. So those are just some ideas of what sophomores can start to do. So 10th graders are not needing to worry about um, testing like the SAT or anything like that other than just paying attention to school and testing in their classes. Um, COVID is changing the testing environment drastically for college admissions and will have lasting changes that can that will benefit or impact the class of 2025. So, um, yeah, I mean, testing really did change um, due to COVID. So a lot of uh, universities, CSUs, UCs, they are test blind. So they do not require the test for admissions anymore. Um, so again, keep that in mind. If you do decide to take the PSAT, which is a practice SAT test, um, then make sure to sign up at the beginning of the year because the registration does close. Um, you know, that deadline comes up quickly. It is closed as of now. So um, if they did not, if your student wanted to take the PSAT and they didn't get a chance, they can take it as a junior. And again, I only recommend to take this test if they are really good test takers. Um, at the end of the day, it's an optional test for public colleges um, and their admissions process. So once you submit a PSAT, uh, sorry, once you submit an SAT um, score, co colleges cannot unsee it. So um, PSAT is a really good opportunity to see how well you will do and if it's worth it. Um, and again, if you're a really great test taker, then I would, um, I would give it a shot, but if it's if testing just makes you really anxious or overwhelmed or stressed out, then it might not be a good idea. So AP is a formal curriculum owned by the College Board. AP is Advanced Placement. Tenth graders have a chance to take one to two AP courses this year. They are accelerated courses. Um, they are accelerated courses. The end in an option. They'll encourage capstone exam in May. So again, um, an AP exam is optional, but it is encouraged, especially if you're doing really well in the class or you're a good test taker. And then we have more AP classes in 11th and 12th grade as well. So the average high school student across the U.S. studies a total of 20 minutes a night in addition to what is completed at school. So studying does not equal homework alone. 
um, studying can mean preparing for quizzes, for tests, um, doing group work projects, reviewing chapters, reading. Um, teachers can provide up to one to two pieces of work a night. So please make sure that you are using your time wisely and you're staying on top of um, all the um, assignments that you need to complete. So community service is something that will be happening this year. The class of 2023 um, had their hours waived last year, so now they will be starting at eight hours per year. You must meet the minimum yearly amounts. Parts of Pathways grade will, it'll be part of your Pathways grade. So um, you must meet the 24 hour total requirement for graduation, but yearly you must meet eight hours a year so that you are passing that class. Your activity must be approved via the form, which is in the front office. And Pathways teacher is the student contact. So student gets approval, logs it in, reports it to the teacher, who then reports it to me. So your Pathways teacher will be your point of contact. And here you can just see that there is a uh, picture of a transcript. So I wanted to go over what information you will find in a transcript. So you will find your grades, your attempted credits, your completed credits, total GPA, weighted and non-weighted, academic GPA from 9 to 12 grade, then 10 to 12, then total, again, 9 to 12. So a lot of really good information. The credit summary is on the bottom right, and it'll show you what you are missing, what you need to complete. And um, this is what all colleges and universities will see. So again, um, it's really important to use your resources so that you are um, doing your best in high school. And um, so you're on the right track with graduation, with credits and um, you know GPA. So again, use RTI, use um, lunch before and after school. Please communicate with your teachers. Um, and do not get any D's or F's because that just makes it really complicated. So thank you so much. That was a quick overview of what um, the parent workshop was about. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, you can call me or um, send me an email or we can set up a time to meet. Thank you again and have a great day.